Now let's talk about quotient identities. You need to know that tangent theta is equal to sine divided by cosine. And cotangent theta is equal to cosine over sine. Now keep in mind tangent is also y divided by x. And cotangent is x over y. And using the reciprocal identities, cotangent is 1 divided by tangent. So those are some formulas you need to know. So these two are known as the quotient identities. When you hear the word quotient, think of division. You're dividing two things. So let's say if sine theta is 4 divided by 5 and cosine theta is 3 over 5. What is the value of tangent theta and cotangent theta? So tangent is simply sine divided by cosine. So it's 4 over 5 divided by 3 over 5. Now you can write that like this, 4 over 5 divided by 3 over 5, and then use keep change flip. You keep the first fraction, change division to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. And you're going to get 4 over 3 as your answer. Another way in which you can get the same answer, which is a technique I like to use, is when you get a complex fraction like this, eliminate the denominator by multiplying the top and bottom by 5. If you do that, notice that you'll be left over with 4 over 3. And I think it's much faster to do it that way. Now, once you have tangent, the best way to find cotangent, you could use cosine over sine to get the answer, but just realize that cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So you just got to flip 4 over 3 and it becomes 3 over 4. That's the fastest way to get cotan once you have Now, tangent. let's say that sine theta is equal to 5 divided by 13 and cosine theta is 12 divided by 13. Find the values of tangent and cotangent. Tangent theta is going to be equal to sine divided by cosine. So sine is 5 over 13. Cosine is 12 over 13. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 13. So these will cancel and those will cancel. And so this is going to be 5 over 12. And then cotangent, it's simply 1 divided by tangent which is 1 over 5 over 12, and that becomes 12 over 5. So that's the value of tangent, I mean cotangent and tangent. Now, keep in mind, you can always do it this way. You can say cotangent is cosine over sine. And cosine is 12 over 13. Sine is 5 over 13. And you know the 13s will cancel. And this will also give you 12 divided by 5. So that's cotangent in this particular problem. Now let's say if we want to find the value of tangent pi divided by 4. How can we do so? So we need to go back to the unit circle and we need to find the values that correspond to pi over 4. So at pi over 4 we have the point root 2 over 2 comma root 2 over 2. Now tangent we know is sine divided by cosine. And we know that sine corresponds to the y value and cosine corresponds to the x value. So therefore tangent is simply y over x. In this case y and x are both the same. So tangent pi over 4 is going to be root 2 divided by 2 divided by itself which they cancel and give you 1. So that's the value of tangent pi over 4. Let's try another one. What is the value of tangent 2 pi divided by 3? So feel free to pause the video and work on this example. 2 pi over 3 is in quadrant 2. And the reference angle of 2 pi over 3 is pi over 3, which is in quadrant 1. Now the point that corresponds to pi over 3 
is 1 half comma root 3 over 2. And in quadrant 2, x is negative, but y is positive. Now that we have that, we can evaluate tangent. So we know tangent is going to be sine over cosine, which is simply y divided by x. It might be easier just to use that. So here's the y value, and here's the x value. So that's going to be root 3 divided by 2 over negative 1 half. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 2. So then this will become root 3 divided by negative 1. So the final answer is negative square root 3. So that's the value of tangent 2 pi over 3. Now what about cotangent 4 pi divided by 3? Try that one. So 4 pi over 3 is located in quadrant 3. And the reference angle for that is pi over 3. So we know the points for uh, pi over 3. The x value is 1 half, and the y value is root 3 divided by 2. So then it corresponds to this point, where the x value is negative 1 half, and the y value is negative square root of 3 divided by 2. x and y are both negative in quadrant 3. Now cotangent is cosine divided by sine. And we know that cosine is associated with the x value, and sine is associated with the y value. So cotangent is basically x divided by y. So here's the x value, and this is the y value. So we've got to put negative 1 half on top, divided by negative root 3 over 2. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by 2 to get rid of the 2's. So what we now have is negative 1 divided by negative square root 3, which is positive 1 over positive square root 3. The two negative signs will cancel. Now the last thing we need to do is rationalize. So let's multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. So this becomes the square root of 3 divided by 3. And so that's cotangent of 4 pi over 3. It's positive square root 3 over 3. Try this one. Tangent of negative 210. So if you have a negative angle, just go ahead and make it positive by adding 360. If it's in radians, add 2 pi to it to make it positive. So this is going to correlate to 150. 150 is in quadrant 2. So this is 150, which, is, which also relates to a negative 210. Now the reference angle is going to be 180 minus the angle in quadrant 2, which is 150, and so that's 30. So once you have the reference angle, you know what point it corresponds to. So an angle of 30, which is the same as pi over 6, and that corresponds to the point root 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And so 150 and negative 210 will correspond to the point negative root 3 over 2, positive 1 half. In quadrant 2, remember, x is negative, y is positive. As you travel towards the left, x is negative, but as you go up, you have a positive y value. Now let's go ahead and evaluate tangent. We know that tangent is y divided by x. y is 1 half, x is a negative root 3 over 2. So this is what we have. And we can cancel the 2's. You can multiply the top and bottom by 2 if you want, but this is faster. So it becomes positive 1 divided by negative root 3. So we need to rationalize. And the final answer is negative root 3 divided by 3. Now what is tangent of 0 degrees? and tangent of 90. Go ahead and find those two. So here's 0, here's 90. At 0, we know the point is 1 comma 0. And at 90, the point is 0, 1. So tangent is y divided by x. So y, in this case, is 1, and x is 0. 
So it's 1 over, actually I'm using the wrong point. I need to use 0 degrees, which is here. So this is the y value that we need to use, and this is the x value. We're looking for tangent of 0 degrees. So the y value at 0 degrees is 0. The x value is 1. 0 divided by 1 is 0. So tangent 0 is 0. Now tangent 90, we need to use these values. So here's the y value, here is the x value. So it's y over x, which is going to be 1 over 0. And anytime you have a 0 in the denominator of a fraction, the value is undefined. So tan 90 is undefined, but tangent 0 is 0. Go ahead and try cotangent of 180 and also cotangent of 3 pi divided by 2. So we know 180 is the negative x-axis. 3 pi over 2, which is the same as 270, that's the negative y-axis. And this corresponds to a point of 0, negative 1. And this point is negative 1, 0. Now cotangent is x divided by y. Tangent is y over x. And so we need to use the point that corresponds to 180. So this is x, this is y. Therefore, this is going to be negative 1 over 0, which means cotangent of 180 is undefined. Now, cotangent of 3 pi over 2. It's going to be x over y, just as before. And this time, x is 0, but y is negative 1. So cotangent at 3 pi over 2 is 0. So anytime you need to find tangent, cotangent, or secant, or cosecant of an angle that's either 0, 90, 180, 270, these are angles that are not in any particular quadrant. They're on the x or y axis. So whenever you have one of those four functions, tan, cotan, secant, cosecant, the answer, as you've seen, is either zero or undefined.